All right, kids, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of the same, but a little bit of different stuff. Um, we're back in the back pig, pig pasture. Um, we're gonna be pulling some fence. Things have gotten interesting. My tractor's down for the count for the moment. I've got two flat tires, so I've got those ordered and on the way. Um, we are going to do some redneck shit and pull some fence in some interesting ways. I've got some lock and tackles. We got the pickup and God damn it, we're gonna get this done. So I am, uh, I'm not gonna bother recording me putting in wood posts cause you guys have already seen that a couple times. So, but I'm gonna just pull you in randomly, show you some stuff I probably haven't showed before. And if I have, do it in a little bit greater detail. Um, a little house cleaning right up front. Um, we now have a Telegram group. So if you are on Telegram, go ahead and search in the backwoods. That is um, the group we started to help funnel some people who are watching the YouTube channel, who are listening to the podcast. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, it's only been started for about 45 minutes now, and it's already pretty crazy. We've got a lot of people coming over from the Lots Project group, um, from Liberty Meat Chat. So I'm happy to have those guys. And again, I'm hoping I can funnel some people in from the show. Um, we're going to talk about meat related things. We're going to talk about homesteading, farming, different things along those vein, along that vein. Um, and then just a bunch of goofing around. Um, it's a community. So let's have fun with it. Um, what else we got other than that? Um, we're just going to keep going with it. Uh, for all the people who are going to comment in <laughs> on the channel, why are you wearing a cowboy hat in Hampshire? Cause it's hot as shit, sunny as shit. And if you can identify as anything right now, I guess I'm identifying as a Texan. So we'll figure it out and get used to it. So, all right, I am going to hop off. We're going to put some wood posts in and I'll pull you in here and there. All right, kids. So what we did, we ran a line again. I'm not trying to make this the prettiest thing possible, but I am trying to make it somewhat put together right. Um, I am only probably going to put in one wood post along this stretch and just level the rest of it out with T-posts. So we'll probably put that one right here, fairly even between the two. Um, again, that's the nice thing about this woven wire. You don't need to put in a ton of the wood posts, just enough to um, strengthen everything up. This runs probably only about, I would say, 60 to 70 feet. So that's not awful. Um, with and the elevation is pretty much the same along the whole thing so i'll be able to come in here with t posts and sure everything up going down along that way i can already tell there's going to be probably one right behind where that truck is one down where the old wood post was right about here and then we'll have our corner down on the bottom um, where the gates are going to be for the entry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just get this line, get the post hole dug, um, get everything stretched out and good to go. And then we're going to be doing some redneck shit. So pay attention, stay, stay tuned, and we'll see what happens. All right, kids, we're back. So we got this wood post in. Again, I'm just going to run one because I'll probably end up putting two or three T-posts on either side of this to shore everything up. Uh, one thing I did just want to say is, as you can see, this line is going to be where the fence is. So, as you can see on the corners, the fence is going to be on the outside of the posts. For your single stationary posts, the fence is going to be on the inside. That is because, say you're a pig and you're pushing up against the fence... If the fence is on this side, they're not gonna be able to push through it. If they're on, the fence is on the opposite side, there is a chance they'll push the staples out. I just had to run some electric in my pig pasture down there on the hard woven wire fence that's separating the two separate pig paddocks. Or my boar was trying to get himself underneath the woven wire. Again, it's, a, it's enough of a deterrent that they're not going to but I didn't want him to break the fence or hurt himself. So we ran a quick electric line on that. But when you put it on the outside of this, you're getting as much surface area 
stapled to the posts as you can. So I'm not too worried about them trying to break through these corners because they are going to be tight as hell. So what I'm going to do, I'll put you down for a little bit. We will get the woven wire stretched out and stapled and we will see how this MacGyvering works stretching this fence. All right, kids, we're back. So we have the line pulled out. Um, we've got it stapled over in this corner because I don't have any room to get the track or get the truck over here. And we are already getting <laughs> a little dicey with our pulling setup. Um, <clears throat> I have done some redneck shit in the day. This one might take the cake. I'm actually pretty proud of how aggressively redneck and dangerous this looks. So we are going to hope for the best and uh, just kind of wing it um if you guys have been keeping up with the channel this is the third way you've seen me pull woven wire the reason i'm doing it is doing this video again on another woven wire video is to point out that you don't need a tractor you don't need any of this like any of the farm implements and stuff to pull woven wire again i would probably say that it is my favorite fencing to use super durable super you can use it for just about anything, any critter. And though it is a pain in the butt sometimes, it's sometimes easier than other fencing. So what I like to do is go through, stand everything up as much as I can. And I will go ahead and show you what we got going on here. So there's the truck. There's a rope. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting worse the further further down you go so what we are gonna do is i'm gonna set you guys up i'm gonna start pulling the truck back a little bit i don't want to put too much tension with the truck because these ropes are pretty old black flies are out and i don't know how dry rotted they are so i don't want to go ahead and pull those so that is why we have the fence puller attached to there so i'm going to pull as long as i can with the truck and then we are going to tighten the rest of it up with the fence puller so i'm going to go ahead and set you guys up and we'll see how this goes i i don't even know what to give you for a level of confidence on this it could be hysterical it could work fantastic i don't know so we'll see <laughs> All right, kids, um, I don't like to ever be shocked by myself, but that actually worked pretty damn well. Um, going down this way a little, this line is a little wonky, but we might try and tighten this up a little bit. I mean, it's pretty damn tight. I think this, with how we're doing it, this might be our best bet. Um, but I'm probably going to do is shut you off for a minute. I'll figure this out and we'll pop it back on. So we'll see you guys in a second. All right, kids, so pretty sure what we got is what we got. Um, this'll straighten up once we get some T-posts in. I think part of the problem was this, was that wonky roll that I bought for our discount. So, and this section was the part that was wonky. So it's just a little bent. So what we're gonna do, 
go through, staple everything up. Um, hopefully that'll tighten everything up. And uh, yeah, see you guys in a second. All right, kids, we're back. It's been, it's been a minute. Um, went in, got some lunch, came out, finished putting in all the T-posts on this line. Once again, this is not my prettiest fencing project. This is definitely my biggest fencing project to get to point. So anything I'm doing at this point, I'm pretty happy with. Again, it's fairly straight. Um, the thing with the T-posts, that's nice. You can kind of see along this line right here. We did end up putting in another wood post up this way over here, but if you have spots that are gonna be looser, you can move the T-posts in or out, depending on <coughs> where you want them, or like how tight you want the fence. So, worst case scenario, your fence is a little loose. Without the T-post, you push that fence out a little bit, put your uh, T-post in, and you'll be able to tighten it up a little bit. It's not going to be straight, but at that point, you're more, more worried about security than you are a straight fence. So what else I've been doing while I've been gone is we have all the wood posts put in for this line of fence. This, you, you can tell I have reached the point of really not giving a shit about how deep these posts are in the ground. I hit a spot over here with this one. I think I maybe got it about two feet in the ground. Maybe, because to put it in perspective, I'm 6'4". But again, this is a stationary one that's just there to help hold everything in. So that will work for now. Um, down here, I made a corner, but it's kind of a opposite corner. So what we did is we put it facing this way. There's gonna be two six foot gates on one going on that post and one going on this post right here. The reason I'm doing two six footers instead of doing 112 is my thought on it is I'll be able to back a trailer down in here and instead of having one big fence that I have to move and try to position it right, I can open both six foot fences away from each other, back the trailer in and then secure the gates on the trailer. Um, it'll make life a little bit easier, I'm hoping. Again, we'll expand this out. This is probably gonna end up being probably like 15 by 15 for a training pen and just a quarantine area. So what we are going to do is, I'm going to clean up a couple things, um, go in and do dad duty, help get the kids to sleep, um, maybe eat something real quick, I might eat after. But uh, I'm gonna come back out here and we are going to get the rest of the fence up. I worked way too goddamn hard today to not get the rest of the fence up on this. So when we see you in well, technically for you, we'll see you in a second. Um, we'll have all the woven wire out and whatever MacGyvered setup I have figured out to stretch it along this line. Cause it's gonna be, it's gonna be funky. Cause 
if you look up and follow that line up, there's a decent rise in elevation. So what I'm gonna have to do is put a chain all the way up at the top of this and pull as much as I can up. So it'll be interesting. Watch along, we'll figure it out. All right, kids, we're back. So kids are down, we had some dinner and I was not gonna finish today without finishing this fence. So as you can see, it's stretched out. We've got it a little tight. So again, if we had the tractor, this would be a thousand times easier because I could lift the bucket of the tractor to deal with the elevation that we're dealing with here. So that's why this has kind of bent a little bit, but it's already fairly tight. Um, so what I am going to do is play my new favorite game, and that is called, <laughs> let's get this shit done before my wife sees what I'm doing and yells at me. So, to deal with the elevation issue, we'll start at the truck first. We've got a ratchet strap. It's a little bit higher than the hitch. Going all the way over to the lock and tackle. That's as high as we can go on this post. And as you can see, the fence is higher up here because of it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is more than likely what I will do is tack everything up there once I get it nice and tight, let everything go again, drop that down, there it is, drop that down and get a better angle on this section. So I'm gonna go ahead, get you guys set up and go to town. All right, kids, we are done. Woven wire is all the way up around the pen. There will be no more woven wire videos coming up for a while, so you're welcome. Um, I cut off the woven wire at this post, mostly because this section, this little pendant area, and this right here is all gonna be wood. They're gonna be hard-sided, so that way when I'm doing training or I'm trying to get pigs in trailers, they can't see outside and try to get out. If a pig can see outside of something, it will try to get out of it. It does not matter if there is a fence in there, it will do its damnedest to get out of there. 
So that's the reason I'm doing that. It worked phenomenally. I am, I, I shouldn't sound so shocked because I filmed it, but for kind of throwing some stuff together to try and make it work, I'm honestly super happy with how it came out. Um, I'm not doing T-Post tonight. I am done with today. It was about 90 degrees today with 100% humidity. I was sweating like a slut in a spelling bee. I, <laughs> um, but we're going to come out here probably later this week and uh, put in all the T-Posts. And all of the fencing in this, hard fencing in this, will be done. Um, more than likely, the next video of this pen you'll see is we will either be doing the um, catch pen down in the bottom or yeah no that will be the next video you'll see from this pen because i can't get the electric done until that's done so we will go ahead and do that but yeah um <laughs> i know it was a little crazy what i was doing today but again i had to get it done um we got pigs coming in july so i want to get this done as quick as possible but this really does just go to show it does not matter you don't need a giant tractor you don't need all of the expensive tools you don't need you can figure all this out with a pickup truck and some rope it it's not difficult it's a pain in the ass but it's not difficult um and if you're thinking about doing this at some point um raising pigs or raising livestock or something like that you can do it you really can if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it and put out a YouTube channel on how to do it, you can do it. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this one. And I appreciate you guys watching.